You know, I did that video episode on John Cougar Mellencamp going off on a fan, and it inspired me to do another episode about the rocker, about his most critically lauded and most popular album from the mid-1980s, an album called Scarecrow. That's right, John Mellencamp. Let's get into it. Hey everyone, I'm Michael Douglas. Welcome to Dr. Pundit. This is where we talk about music, not medicine. And it's the home of original long form videos without YouTube shorts. And on this edition of the show, it's another album review where I'm talking about the classic 1985 hit album, but also critically lauded album by John Mellencamp called Scarecrow. That's right, it's another patented album review. John Mellencamp insisted on those lyrics in his 1989 single, Pop Singer. By that time, he really needn't have worried about those early days of playing the pop music game because he eventually left them behind with his 1985 album, Scarecrow. The album, Scarecrow, found Mellencamp concentrating on writing his best yet batch of songs and recording them in a no frills affecting fashion. The direct approach did pay off in one of the finest albums, one of the finest pop rock, one of the finest rock albums of the decade of the 1980s. Now, before they headed into the studio to record the album that would become Scarecrow, John Mellencamp gave his backing band a little homework assignment. He handed them a list of classic rock and roll and R&B songs from his youth and told the band to learn them cold. Now, though it may sound like it, Mellencamp wasn't telling his band to do this because he was planning a covers album, but he wanted the band to have a frame of reference for the sounds he envisioned on the Scarecrow sessions. Now, this was crucial because John Mellencamp wanted the album to be independent of the pop sounds of the day. After all, he had been there, done that with music, and really didn't have any plans on going back to that. Now, remember, this was a guy labeled Johnny Cougar when he was first starting out by his record company in the late 1970s. Now, and although the moniker and the radio-friendly songs that accompanied that name adorned the first few records and certainly got Mellencamp's foot into the door, neither the identity or the recording style stuck with him. Now, of course, everybody knows his big break came in 1982 with the American Fool album and the smash singles Hurt So Good and Jack and Diane, both top 10 year-end singles for 1982. But even that tale of, say, in Jack and Diane, of a small town couple came adorned with a lot of synthesizers and white noise percussion instruments that helped it to stand out at radio. His 1983 album, another fantastic album that I love called Uh Huh, added this surname, Mellencamp, to his credits. So John Cougar Mellencamp by 1983. That particular album included hits like the Authority Song and Pink Houses. But some people would say that those songs sounded like there could have been dry runs for Scarecrow, a selection of songs about small town ethos rendered in music alternatively invigorating and moving, but never synthetic. The album Scarecrow really does grab your attention as being something completely different right from the opening notes. He blurts out a lot of guitar juts at different angles from a stomping beat, which herald the blistering treatise on the diminution of the American farmer. Rain on the Scarecrow, a hit from that album. Not a top 10 hit, but emblematic of the album. It was a song both fierce in its critique of the conditions of the farmers that were enduring and tender in its sympathy toward them. And it set the tone for pretty much the rest of the songs on the album. 
The singles, the radio singles from the album Scarecrow, displayed Mellencamp's versatility as a songwriter and an artist. Lonely Old Night, a big hit from the album, hit number six, seems like a straightforward song of seduction until you intuit the loneliness at the heart of it. And it's a sad, 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 sad feeling when you're living on those in betweens, but it's okay. Another of the top 10 hits from that album, Small Town, romanticizes a subject without whitewashing it. Meanwhile, Mellencamp had to be convinced by his label into including the song R.O.C.K. in the USA, which turned out to be the biggest hit on the album, uh, but it's the perfect closer to a stellar album, and I'm sure to this day he appreciates that. And as you dig deeper into the album, Scarecrow, you can hear what a songwriting peak John Mellencamp reached because he didn't let up in the quality throughout the entirety of the album. Whether the writing slices of life, a track called Rumble Seat, or outsized story songs like Justice and Independence, 85, Mellencamp leads with authenticity and trust that everything else will fall into place. I don't think he had to worry about that either. Mellencamp was often lumped into the likes of Bruce Springsteen around that time as purveyors of so-called heartland rock. But it's interesting that the boss needed to embrace the synths and drum sounds of the era to make his splash on the charts with Born in the USA. Of course, we all know what happened with that album. While Mellencamp triumphed from backing away from those elements, Scarecrow ended the era of Johnny Cougar for good. And it propelled John Mellencamp into his proper place in the R.O.C.K. music history pantheon. And again, this is one of those direct mid-1980s albums that not only set the tone for, in this case, John Mellencamp's approach to music for the rest of his career, but it also represented an album from a year that the music was rapidly changing. Uh, music of the 1980s was rapidly changing and how that year bridged the earlier rock sounds, in this case, from the early 1980s to the late 1980s and beyond. A very important year, a very important album. Scarecrow, by John Mellencamp. I'm Michael Douglas, and if you like what you see here on Dr. Pundit, please don't hesitate to like and subscribe. That moves the channel up further in the algorithm and allows people to find this channel just like you have. So please do those things. And as the late great Barry White always used to say, let the music play. And I'll see you on the next episode.